so good to see you. Great I know we're a few you, days man. behind today yeah. filming this. Tell us kind of what's been going on in your world. Well, uh, you know, I'm paying for the transgressions of my youth. Uh-huh. I started off as a power lifter, and I think I've mentioned before that I've squatted some pretty heavy weight. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife and I bought an RV. Oh. And I decided I was going to put the floors in. Mm-hmm. And I'm not the most flexible person in the world. And I was sanding down these floors, mm-hmm. and I went to stand up, and I couldn't stand up. Oh, wow. And my hip, my left hip started bothering me. Hmm. And then the next morning I woke up, and I couldn't hardly move. And I, I don't know, I didn't really think too much about the floor because it felt better when I stood up. Mm-hmm. But then a couple of days go by, and I still can't hardly walk. Jeez. And so I went in to see a doctor, and they, they did some x-rays, and... When they brought the x-rays out, it wasn't really something really good to see. Oh, They're, really? Yeah. You know, we, we have our the pelvis, mm-hmm. and you have these the femoral head is like a ball, mm-hmm. and it fits in this socket mm-hmm. in the pelvis. Well, my left side, there was bone. It was just bone on bone. Oh, my gosh. And my right side had a little bit of spacing. has a little bit of arthritis, but it's mm-hmm. not, not too bad. And uh, so the doctors right then and there said, oh, you're going to have to have a hip replacement. Wow. You know, and I'm thinking, God, I'm 56 years old. 56 you know. and, and just healthy as can be. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. But my joints and the mus- <clears throat> musculoskeletal system is great. Mm-hmm. Although I have had a few muscle tears. Yeah. And uh, But anyway, they said that they were going to have to schedule me for surgery. And, and I said, he said, well, when, can, when do you want to do it? And mm-hmm. I said, what, do you have anything open today? Oh, my gosh. And you were ready. I'm ready to go. If I have to have it done, mm-hmm. I want to go and get it done. Yeah, you were in a lot of pain, though, uh, weren't it was, you? Yeah, yeah, very painful. Wow. I was kind of limping and hunched mm-hmm. over. And that is not good in my field no. of expertise. No. And uh, so anyway, I, I got moved up. They, they, it was like scheduled for a month out. And I thought, mm-hmm. I don't know if I can make that. But mm-hmm. I was lucky somebody canceled and I got in. And I had that surgery done on Tuesday. And as we were talking, I mean, I literally got off of the emergency room bed and walked across the room. Wow. So just incredible. So just, I mean, I know you obviously were cut on, had surgery, but did it feel better the moment you stood up and... Yeah, it Could has never tell? felt like it felt prior. To really, surgery. that's felt, amazing. And, and most most people I've spoke to that have had hip surgery, they all say the same mm-hmm. thing because mm-hmm. by the time you get there, you're hurting so bad that mm-hmm. you'll do anything. Wow. And uh, you know, and, and that gets me. Yeah, I feel bad for some people that get hooked on certain drugs, yeah. like the opioids, because they're genuinely going into something just trying to ease the pain. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of worried about that myself because I took his. The minimal amount of, of, of uh, like, Tylenol 3 or Tylenol mm-hmm. 4 mm-hmm. prior to having the surgery. But I had to do it until I, they could work me in. Mm-hmm. And uh, But, I mean, probably two days after my surgery, I just stopped. And With, I, yeah. And now it's what I'm about eight days out. Mm-hmm. I've already worked out three times. Wow. And uh, it's just going great. I started back to work full-time today. Mm-hmm. And I started back yesterday mm-hmm. a little bit. So. so you feel pretty good? We're kind of at the end of the day here. I feel great. That's I mean, awesome. still not bothering me. I am wearing a real sexy uh, compression sock. I see that. It's even striped, yeah, guys. it's beautiful. It's striped multicolors. And I actually got this for Christmas one year, and I thought, somebody gave me compression socks? Like, what are they thinking? <laughs> and I'm, I'm now, glad they probably Now they're coming in handy, aren't they? Problems. Yeah, they, it's really nice. So that's it great. Feels good. But the swelling, that's the only thing that causes some pain. Mm-hmm. There's just going to be some fluid that accumulates after, you know, some of that mm-hmm. traumatic experience because they're actually cutting that head of that femur off and driving down a ah. spike about six inches into your femur, and it's got a ball attached, mm-hmm. and they go into your pelvis and kind of, mm-hmm. kind of uh, what would you say, ream that out, mm-hmm. and they put this cup in there and where the ball fits. And mm-hmm. It's just amazing. I mean, it's... I it's, think our, our camera girl's about to pass out over there. <laughs> I'm about to pass out. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's me about to pass out here. So, yeah, they did an anterior approach. Mm-hmm. There's a posterior and anterior. Mm-hmm. And with the posterior, they have to actually cut through the glute. Oh, my and, I mean, gosh. That's a major. that's a major muscle. It's the largest mm-hmm. muscle in our body. And uh, with me, they did an anterior approach. Mm-hmm. And the nice thing about that is the accelerated healing time, because all they do is they grab a hold of the iliopsoas, which is our hip flexor, mm-hmm. and the sartorius, which is a an abduction Mm -hmm. uh, muscle and they just pull those muscles apart Mm -hmm. and it exposes the the moral head Mm -hmm. so they don't have to cut through any muscle wow it's just amazing wow wow that is amazing that is amazing so talk to me about what we're going to talk about today well i mean we were supposed to have somebody on and they Uh they live in uh they live in illinois Uh and we're going to be having him on Mm -hmm. but uh he couldn't make it today because they were on vacation Mm -hmm. and uh so i was just thinking about the different forms of therapy Mm -hmm. 
you know, when I first started reading about, you know, life coaching and life coaching will give you some tips on certain, uh, certain types of therapy. And the, the main one they use, which I love, it's my favorite, is called it's CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. And basically what cognitive behavioral therapy's whole point is, is it helps you to become aware of the thoughts that elicit the emotions that create the behavior. Mm-hmm. So we got to become aware of that internal dialogue. And it's really cool when you get that down because you don't realize how much you're talking to yourself until you make someone aware that they're talking to themselves. And then when you, and, and then the, the main thing is that what you tell yourself is actually what you believe. And sometimes that's not even reality. It's not Isn't true. that amazing? Yeah. <clears throat> so you, you've got to be at a point of readiness is what I call it mm-hmm. to do CBT with someone. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot of worksheets and there's, that's, that's your toolbox. You have a mm-hmm. toolbox of worksheets mm-hmm. and words that will plug in. When I hear, when I think of that, I'll plug that word in. Mm-hmm. It takes me right out of that word. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, some people, though, they're, they're struggling with acknowledging that they have these thoughts. Mm-hmm. They're fighting against it. And, and mm-hmm. what we call that is that they're fighting reality. Mm-hmm. They're fighting what is. I mean, why should we fight what is, what is mm-hmm. reality? Mm-hmm. You know, fighting it only makes it stronger. Mm-hmm. It doesn't minimize it. And that's what we're really after. You know, the main things that we're mm-hmm. looking at is we're looking at predominantly stress, mm-hmm. anxiety, and anger. Those are those are the three big uh, problems people have uh, in interacting in their day to day. When when we run into friends, I mm-hmm. mean, you know, if we're in a state of panic and they, I hope she doesn't see me, and then you meet them in the hallway, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's just overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and, and and sometimes that when I'm saying overwhelming, there's no difference between running into somebody you know versus someone holding a gun in front of you. You're that panicked. Wow. And or or uh, an example, my son had a football game, a uh, Pop Warner football game, and I had my dog, which is a pit mm-hmm. bull on a chain and mm-hmm. he's a, a leash, super sweet dog. Mm-hmm. And there was a lady across the other side of the football field screaming. And I, we were everybody was looking around to see what she was screaming at. She was screaming at me with the dog. Oh wow! And uh, so I mean, that's that, she that's, just was panicked. Yeah, it's a trick. Oh wow! You know, it just set her off, and so mm-hmm. you're. Your, your perception to whatever that thing is, is way, it's way too much than what it should be. Mm-hmm. And so you clarify and evaluate those thoughts. You know, do. The, the way I correlate what you're talking about is, you know, we obviously train people to sell real estate and they're having to put themselves out there on social media, for instance, and do video and do things and host events. And sometimes they have this barrier of moving to that next level. They know they need to do it, but they cannot bring themselves to do it. They can't bring themselves to pick up the phone and make the calls that it's going to require them in this business to meet people and talk to them to help them buy and sell real estate. And so that's a barrier we are constantly having to uh, help people get past, just like with you in the fitness business. If you remember back when you opened your first gym, I mean, sometimes when we were younger doing things, we didn't know to be scared. And it's almost like this fear sets in as we get older. Yeah, you start off self-confident. Mm. I'm <laughs> telling the young pregnant. people are easy because they don't have all this stuff, this junk yet, yeah. as the older people do. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and I, and I think that's because of the monkey mind is what we call okay. it. It's where all these thoughts are mm-hmm. jumping in and out, and, and you're intimidated by people. Mm-hmm. And we really shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. True. Know, and and, and with, the, uh, with, with constant stimulation with our phone or our laptop, we, we, there's more information coming in that we can process efficiently. Absolutely, I agree with that. And, and two, I think that shows how out of touch the younger generation is becoming with the one-on-one conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've asked a lot of people to come on, and they're scared to death. They don't want to really? do it. Really? Okay. I mean, we're just talking like we do yeah, outside. absolutely. And uh, so I think that, that if I had any advice for kids these days is to communicate, mm-hmm. to do public speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, it, start off with your, your brother, then bring your mm-hmm. sister in, and mm-hmm. then bring your parents in, and then go to a neighbor. You need to be comfortable and confident in mm-hmm. any area, in, in any situation you're in. And the thing with confidence, too, I think, you know, like, like I wouldn't be, I don't know a lot about politics, mm-hmm. but I know what I know. So I would feel okay about, I, this, is, this is something, don't ever lie. Right. Okay, don't, mm-hmm. 
the worst thing I think you can do is try to act like you know more mm -hmm. than you do. Because mm -hmm. you end up making yourself look mm -hmm. kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. Whereas if somebody ever asks me, but they go, they'll go, somebody will ask me, well, what if somebody comes in with a nutrition question and I don't know? Mm -hmm. I say, you know what? Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But now that you've asked me that, I'm going to go and find out, and I'll get mm -hmm. back with you. Mm -hmm. and, and we all become smarter. You know, so you've, you've asked me something that I'm not real sure about, and I'm going to thank you for that because, mm -hmm. wow, I never thought about that, mm -hmm. and it's something I need to know. Mm -hmm. So sure. there's no deal of, I don't feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, you made, you gave me the potential to be better. Absolutely. what I do. Absolutely. So, so in doing all this, when I, when I go back to toolbox, so cognitive behavioral therapy is great if someone is ready to change. Mm -hmm. There is, and gosh, I wish I rem if I can recall this, there's something called the stages of change. Mm -hmm. there's, and it's like a circle, and it's pre-contemplation. You're not even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, pre-contemplation, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, an example, if, if I was to ask, tell somebody that, uh, have you ever tried eating this, that, and that for lunch? Mm -hmm. If that person's not ready, they'll say, well, you know, that's fine. I didn't ask you. Okay, that's where you get you can tell you get mm -hmm. somebody that is resistant mm -hmm. to change and you've you you brought something up that's they know but they don't want to talk about mm -hmm. it. So you got pre-contemplation, then you have contemplation. Well, maybe I need to ask him, you know, what what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. Uh pre-contemplation contemplation main uh action. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where we start preparing. We might go out and buy some Tupperware bowls. Mm -hmm. We might buy a rice steamer and mm -hmm. a, a, a air fryer. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting ready. Then you put it into action. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, I think it's called falling back. Mm -hmm. What happens is we fall back out of it. Mm -hmm. But then you have, it, it just keeps going. It's a cycle. It is a cycle, and, and that's okay. You know, well, that explains okay. a lot, you know, because, I mean, that's what we find with our realtors. You know, they'll get hyped up and get ready to go, and they'll do everything. That, I mean, they'll buy a program, and I'm guilty of that myself. You buy a program, and you're going to execute on it. You listen to two or three things of it, then you kind of sit back a little bit, and then it's it's – it's you get ready, you get ready, you get ready, you implement a little bit, and then you have to start all over all over again. Yeah, yeah. you know, you're always, I know you've heard this, you're always just that one failure away from success. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. to, to me, uh, what I try to get, so I, I usually give my clients words mm -hmm. to, to imprint words that you can use in certain situations. So when things go bad, they don't go the way that you wanted them to go. Mm -hmm. I want you always to say yes. Okay, and and you know, uh, it's a it's a kind of a spinoff of a Nietzschean type thing in that because when you when you fail, you just learned a valuable lesson, mm -hmm. and without that failure, you couldn't grow stronger. So it's mm -hmm. necessary. It's a necessary part of growth. Mm -hmm. There's you know in 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 um, in, in exercise physiology. There's a uh, term called the SAD principle, S-A-I-D. It's an acronym. It's specific adaptation to imposed demand. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a specific adaptation to whatever I'm doing. If you're a couch potato, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to be a couch potato. If you get up and start running, mm -hmm. the, the leg muscles are going to start shrinking up and convert to more of a slow twitch fiber type mm -hmm. so that it doesn't burn as much fuel so that you get better at running longer and long distance. Mm -hmm. It's horrible for weight loss. Mm -hmm. But it, that's, the, that's the specific adaptation. Mm -hmm. So if something happens to me and I fail, I'll give you an, uh, when, I, when I was first starting this process, my air conditioning unit went out at our business. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, smart guy, uh, why do I say yes now? I mean, what, mm -hmm. you know, what good does that do me? I mean, it's going to be a $5,000 unit. Mm -hmm. But when I said yes, it automatically made me think, well, I own my own business. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people can say that. True. And so that, to me, was big enough mm -hmm. to find that good thing mm -hmm. in that moment. Absolutely. So, you you know, you, in, in, in the gym, the gym mimics life. If I, My goal is failure. I'm, I'm, so failure has never really been that hard for me because that's my goal. Because mm -hmm. if you're not failing, I don't think you're really trying mm -hmm. as hard as you could be. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be some things that don't work. I mean, I'm sure you've had things that didn't go quite the way you thought. We want to minimize that. Mm -hmm. If you so let's say you've had two things, a, a lot of people have a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, that just means that you learned from that and you didn't do it again. You know what? I, I, we're gonna we're gonna open another can of worms here. I mean, sometimes relationships are that way. 
You let people into your life, mm-hmm. and it and it's almost like you learn from that. You learn not to let those people back in. Well, you hope you learn. They go in and out, in and out, and then yeah. you. I mean, and 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 the relationship is it's a toxic relationship sometimes that you have with people, and you just and then you think to yourself, I mean, you just have to get rid of that relationship, you know. Yeah, I never really <clears throat> understood why. <clears throat> You know, people hold on to that person because mm-hmm. they're toxic. You know? Well, and I'm, I mean, I'm talking about work relationships with sure. people that you know. Yeah. Work relationships. I mean, this is not a romantic relationship like a spouse or a boyfriend or something. It, this is a work relationship where you have people that come into your life, your friends, and you have to really evaluate some of those relationships. Um, In some ways, we can get over get over that because you've got to work with them, mm-hmm. you know, unless you move to another location. Mm-hmm. Is uh, you know, again, I'd say yes. And the number one point, though, is believe people when they show you who they are the mm-hmm. first time. You know, so mm-hmm. if I ask you, okay, well, you know, you're, you're, you're like, I, you know, I just want her to be my best friend, but she's done this and that. Well, so why are you still allowing her to do that? Mm-hmm. I mean, she showed you who she was the first time. Exactly. What are your expectations of her? Well, the expectations get to a point where you just go, I know that this person is this way, and I've got to limit my contact with them is what happens. That's when you're done. But but yep. before that happens, <clears throat> your expectations are that she's going to change. Exactly. It's gonna well, it's going to be different. Yeah. yeah Something won't. has happened in her life, and she's going to be different now. Yep. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but it's very rare that people change unless they want to change. Mm-hmm. And, and there's nothing I can do to change them. Mm-hmm. That's a do-it-yourself project. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can do is change the way I respond. The thing about it is, is they don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah. You know, some of the, some people don't even realize they're doing it. They don't. And I'm, you know, I love, I, it's like a chess match. Mm-hmm. Cause like I've encountered people like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, they were some of my real problem clients. Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, she's mm-hmm. coming in at 10 mm-hmm. o'clock mm-hmm. and I make it a game. You know, when mm-hmm. she goes, well, uh, let's just say she sees somebody else like doing walking lunges. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do those? Well, because last week you said you're, it bothered your knees. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do that? You know, well, because last time we tried to do that, it hurt your lower back. And mm-hmm. I want you to be able to keep coming. Mm-hmm. Just giving people logical, there, wow. there, should, there is a reason why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why you do what you do. Mm-hmm. So to me, I should, if, if my reasoning is sound, mm-hmm. then I have a good response. Mm-hmm. Rather than me taking it personal, mm-hmm. you know. So and also what I'll think to myself is suffering. Mm-hmm. Okay, this person is obviously suffering. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. This anger is not directed at me. It's just coming out at this time. Mm-hmm. And so I don't take it personal. Right, exactly. And, but I, I, lo- I love the challenge of somebody who's a real problem mm-hmm. because it's almost like with lifting weights, you add more weight on mm-hmm. so you can get stronger. Mm-hmm. So I don't really run from people like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't expect them to do unreasonable things. Mm-hmm. I know them. They've mm-hmm. showed me who they are. Yeah, but you know you're keeping that relationship a a client relationship. You're not letting them in your life personally. But I have before. Have you? Oh yeah. I mean, it took me a long time. I mean, uh, I guess when I started this 15 years ago, yeah, I was. I think that's the time I told you I went mm-hmm. home and told Kim I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, because it was eating me up because these people weren't changing, mm-hmm. they were always griping at me, mm-hmm. and I realized that you know number one we're suffering, mm-hmm. and with suffering. It makes it hard to do anything else. Mm-hmm. And then I had the epiphany of that. I'm not really trying to change people's bodies. I'm trying to change their mind. Absolutely. And you're, you're not really trying to change the individual, but you're trying to change the way the individual thinks mm-hmm. about selling and being confident. Absolutely. Uh, I just had a meeting with someone that uh, in their business, I'm trying not to get into their business mm-hmm. to, to let on anything, but they are having to go up on some of the rates Mm -hmm. and they can't help it because it's who they deal through. Mm -hmm. They've gone up on the rates. Mm -hmm. And what I recommended, which is, I mean, I hope you don't think it's deceitful, but uh, what I recommended, okay. So they, when I, when I call you say, Hey, I hate to let you know this, but this rate has gone up $7. Mm -hmm. They're our rate. Okay. And they don't want to pay that extra $7. Mm -hmm. And say, you know, I know, you know, you sympathize with them. I know. Sure. I mean, I hate, I hated to make this mm-hmm. phone call because mm-hmm. I value you as a customer <clears throat> and I don't want to do this, but you know, I, I have thousands of people that I interact mm-hmm. with and I, I can't just pay everybody $7. Yeah. There's no way. So I understand if they're still irate, I told them first sympathize with them, mm-hmm. validate their anger. Mm-hmm. And then if they're still angry, 
then what you do is you just go, you know what? I am so sorry. We've had something come up here at the office. Can I get right back with you? Mm -hmm. It's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you see that someone is in that fight mode, uh, the chances of you in that conversation, Mm -hmm. getting them out of that Mm -hmm. is very, very small. Mm -hmm. So what it's best to do is to get off the phone, Mm -hmm. let them argue with themselves for maybe up to 30 minutes. And then you call them back and say, Miss so-and-so, I am so sorry. You start off apologizing that I had to get off the phone mm-hmm. like that, but something came up. Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, I hate to get back to this. Mm-hmm. By that time, they've calmed down. Absolutely. We do it all the time in real estate. We have people's deals that sometimes fall through. The financing didn't occur. Or something has happened. And it's, it's it, there's nothing you can do about it. And yeah. I tell agents, you have to separate yourself, first of all, from this. And then when you explain, you talk to them about it. Yes, they're going to be angry, but tomorrow they're going to be okay again. Yeah, you got to let it calm. You got to let it calm down. Yeah, and sometimes the the, uh, the the amygdala, which is our fight or flight mm-hmm. mechanism, it, it's really interesting because there's another area called the insula, and what happens is the the amygdala is going to stimulate. It's going to uh, is going to send a signal to the logical mm-hmm. analysis analog, analogy analogous mm-hmm. brain to we need to get out of here or mm-hmm. we're going to fight this person. Mm-hmm. Where the insula directs the, 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 uh, the message down mm-hmm. through our central nervous system. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 this cascade of neural transmitters occur, mm-hmm. and it puts that body to match the mindset of the brain. Mm-hmm. So you either feel like running or you know, mm-hmm. chew, tearing something up. Mm-hmm. The body's trying to mimic what's going on in the mind. Mm-hmm. And once you can see that when you're talking to someone. I love it. Because I, I mean, I don't love getting someone angry, mm-hmm. but you can see them start to fidget. That means it's mm-hmm. it's already sent the signal down, mm-hmm. and now what is my job is to do is can I get them out of that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's it's practice, you know. And then, but it's it's practice in working with people, but it's also practice for myself. I think mm-hmm. Aristotle said to teach is to learn twice. Mm-hmm. And so, True. if I can help you, then I can help myself. Mm-hmm. You said the contracts, you know. Mm-hmm. We, my wife and I, have literally lost. As of yesterday, we lost another one. About 25 contracts mm-hmm. trying to buy a house. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, And I've kind of mm-hmm. just gotten mm-hmm. a little bit numb. Mm-hmm. Just, okay, we'll move on yeah, to the next. absolutely. Because there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's what DBT is about, mm-hmm. accepting reality. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, ex- accepting reality is not about, you know, it's not about condoning or being apathetic. Mm-hmm. It's about that I'm acknowledging what is. Mm-hmm. Okay, this happened. I may not mm-hmm. like it, but to avoid it, mm-hmm. think about how much, how much energy that requires. Mm-hmm. You'll think about that, ruminate on that mm-hmm. anger, fear, anxiety. <clears throat> okay, Kelly, I've got to stop you. <laughs> you just said something. I'm just like reeling back here. You have lost 25 contracts. What in the world are you doing? Well, well, we thought we could offer full yes. price, cash price, because that'd be great, because other people are getting financing. And it just takes one person to come in and offer full cash price, right. 5000 over. Right. And we don't know what's being offered. Oh, my word. Okay. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, okay. you don't know. This market you and is I are crazy. friends, yes. and I didn't know you were looking for a house, but let me help you talk you through some of that. Okay. Uh, some of that. Okay. Well, I mean, we do have a realtor. Sure. We, we sure. Up with like Absolutely. Three, three, four years Absolutely. Ago. Good friend that's a realtor. But still, let's talk through that just a second. Okay. Can we do that? Sure. Can we, give me some details of what's happening there. You don't know what's happening on the, on the sale of this. Well, I do know what's happening. What's happening? We're not offering enough money. You're offering full price, though, right? But it's not enough money. Okay. Do you hear that, guys? He's getting beaten out of deals still in this market. Wow. Well, we're not. We're not, we have a price that uh-huh. we're willing to go. But it, but you're offering full price for whatever that is, right? So are you saying going to tell me to go over that? No, okay. I'm not telling you to go over, Kelly. I'm trying, I'm to, get, I'm trying to guess you. ahead of time. See, he's trying. He's <laughs> trying to teach me something. No, no. What I'm telling you to do is get your agent to get on the phone with a listing agent and figure out what's going on, because even though there's multiple offers, she can still talk to that agent, and she can kind of get a feel. By time you've lost out on this many contracts, you've got to be able to do something. Now, sometimes it could be $1,000. It could be $500 that makes the difference. But at least yeah. you need to know going into it. Are you paying cash or are you getting financing on cash. it? Cash. Jeez, you yeah. ought to be able to do this. Yeah. You ought to be able to do this. Well, I mean, sometimes it's twenty to 50000 over oh, my what the word. full price was. Wow. 
So I mean, because we're so you're fi- you're for, finding the autopsy afterwards. What it is then? Yeah. Okay. And and at least you're knowing. You know, we. I mean, what we want, I guess, is what everybody wants. Yeah. You know, and they're want, they're willing to pay for that. Yeah. And uh, just not had a lot Man. of good luck. But you know, we're not going to go above and beyond. I don't. I don't ever want to get myself in this hole. Yeah. Of well, I'm not like work, that. Yeah. You know, for this house, it's uh-huh. a house. You know. Yeah. Are you finding them the first day on the market or something like okay, that? Okay. So I'll tell you. Uh, okay. So Wednesday, we made an offer, full cash. Uh-huh. There was two offers. Already on this house, seven hours mm-hmm. on the market. What price uh, range are we talking about? Well, we're talking anywhere between three fifty and four fifty. Okay, this would be a secondary kind of fun home. It'll okay. be a land, a pond, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. a house. Doesn't matter. Okay, you know, just something to sure. have fun on. Mm-hmm. And uh, but everybody's looking for that. <laughs> and uh, we, we, so, we, see, two two offers were made. They were going to finance. Okay, so we thought, hey, hey. We'll price cash. Well, now there's about 20 contracts, and uh, they're they're way mm. over. Ken, I don't know what they're what they're over, but holy smoke! Is it because you think their financing is why they're way over? I don't know that. Yeah, yeah. I would think so because it, it, having somebody owner finance is very rare, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're just mm. uh, that's where we're at. But and I could get frustrated, but I'm accepting reality. You're accepting it is it. what it is. Yeah. And I hope they're happy with it. So let me ask you this. So if you, you don't know going into it, but if do they ever give you the opportunity to come up on your offer? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we have a couple times. And you've come up and then still lost? Not enough, yeah. Not enough. Yeah. Your agent needs to ask, what's it going to take? Well, I mean, apparently she has been asking. Has she? Yeah. Okay. That's why we just... We're not going to go. And so high. that's when when she comes back and says, "Well, this is what it's going to take," and you go, "No, I'm not doing that." Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Wow. Even we have a couple of them that we've wanted so bad. We have looked at going ahead and financing, but even with what we're sure paying cash and financing, it still isn't enough. Whoa. There was a place on Lake Palestine that was five hundred thousand. Uh huh. And it went for five fifty. Wow. You know, I mean, was it on the water? Uh, no. Okay. Had My a pool. It was God. nice. But really? It, yeah. Mm. yeah. So. I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I'll keep my eyes open for something maybe that in the office okay. that, that's going on. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I'm glad yeah. to know that. But, you know, if I was like, I could get down. Yeah. I could get angry. I could just stop. Oh, I mean, you know, you're in good spirits over this because I'll tell you, Kelly, I've got clients that maybe something happens, some squirrely happens in the deal, and, I mean, they just shut down. And it's good that you're keeping a good attitude about it because that's just the nature of what's happening in this market right now. You know, I will tell you, we had somebody, Destiny Bowling. We're we're just all across the board today what we're talking about. But Destiny Bowling came in. She's with CMG Mortgage. And this week she talked about our housing here in Tyler, Texas, is 13% higher than it was uh, this time last year. In other words, houses have increased by 13%. And they're still going to increase even more. Yeah. You know, you would think, and people are trying to outweigh that interest rate of the higher interest rate. And so she did three formulas for us to show us what happens is you can refinance. But I know you're not you're not looking for financing. Yeah. But in this case, but man, these housing rates are continuing to climb and are anticipating to continue to climb. I had a developer send me an article yesterday where the two places in Texas that they're going to continue to climb is San Antonio, Texas, and Tyler, Texas. Can you believe we we made a news article? Is that, you think, retirement? You know, I think that it has a lot to do with our medicals, mm-hmm. uh, and I think it has a lot to do with re- retirement and just these little these little towns like Tyler, you know. Yeah. Uh, but San Antonio was the other one where they're, they're saying that the uh, housing is going to continue to climb. But those let, were the only two. Let me give you another example. Mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, <laughs> we're kind of all over the place, uh-huh. but this was a house in the Azalea District. Mm-hmm. Went on the market Thursday. Okay. Uh-huh. Kim called me and said, why don't you drive by there? So okay. I went by at 3.30, mm-hmm. and there was a realtor in the yard, and she said she was the one that was uh-huh. handling the house. Sure. And I said, well, we were going to bring our realtor over mm-hmm. this evening. Would that be okay? Mm-hmm. She said, well, we're going to go ahead and close down, uh, uh, what do you call it? The offers. The offers Goodness. at 5 o'clock. I said, day? you're going to close it down? You've only been on the market two days? She goes, we have 30 offers over. Oh, my word. 30. This was two weeks ago. Wow. Okay. 
So. You know, it, but it's not all housing is not like that. I mean, there are housing that it's, it's just sitting on the market right now. And generally, they have overpriced them already. Right. Well, I think everybody sees an yeah. opportunity to make some money. Absolutely. The ones that really truly are worth it, they're selling within yeah. two days. Absolutely. And then these wow. other ones are hanging. I mean, we've hanging. got one in our neighborhood that's been for sale for almost half a year. Really? And it's easy to see why. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well, I'm going to keep an eye open for you for something. Okay. Okay. Gosh, right. I hate great. that it's you're, great. I'm glad we have I hate that you're in this in this <laughs> position here. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, what else do we want to cover? Well, so let, let's use the <sighs> let's use me in the situation of getting upset that we haven't been able to buy a house. Okay. I can't believe it. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the realtor. I don't know what's going uh-huh. on. You know, I'm just sick of looking at houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's me. So you go on and on and on with this type of internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you were angry enough that you wanted to come see me, mm-hmm. then we might, and you weren't really ready for me to tell you the truth, mm-hmm. then what I've got to do is if i got a pair of pliers, but I need a screwdriver, I mm-hmm. need to go back into my toolbox because mm-hmm. I this lady would be a Phillips head, let's say. Yeah. And I brought out a, I brought out a pair of pliers. So mm-hmm. the next toolbox I would go into, the screwdriver, mm-hmm. would be DBT. It's dialectical behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. And so now I've, I know what I'm working with. Mm-hmm. I know the situation, the, the emotional state that this person is in. Mm-hmm. The first thing we have to do is to get this person to accept reality. Mm-hmm. You know, we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. Yeah. And uh, so you've got to back off because cognitive behavioral therapy is a little bit more, it would be too in her face. So this is going to mm-hmm. be more, uh, it's compassionate, it's it's more of a non-judgmental. I'm not mm-hmm. really making her mm-hmm. judge herself. I'm just saying mm-hmm. I, I could I could do a hypothetical of someone else so that we don't we're not talking about you. Mm-hmm. And uh, people usually are more uh, reasonable or open mm-hmm. in that state of mind. Mm-hmm. And and then so you have mindfulness, become aware of the internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me what you've been thinking lately. Mm-hmm. You know, how's that making you feel? Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that? How's your husband mm-hmm. doing? Have, are y'all doing okay? Mm-hmm. Because usually there's a lot of, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so once we get her to accept mm-hmm. what's going on, and, mm-hmm. and usually most people will they'll mm-hmm. still leave a little bit upset because it doesn't really happen overnight. Mm-hmm. But then, then you venture over to it's called radical acceptance. And it's accepting the fact that we have not been able to buy a home. Mm-hmm. Look, it's, you know, you know your limit. You've, mm-hmm. you've done all you can do. Mm-hmm. You're controlling the controllables. Which and, is all we can do, and you're very logical about it. I mean, you you're you're not logical. doing it based on emotion. That, yes. That's I have to commend you for that. Yeah, you've got to be really, mm-hmm. really uh, mm-hmm. in a in a clarify and evaluate these thoughts, mm-hmm. and uh, you get to where you're in a state of doing that, and it, it's it's amazing, uh, it's amazing how you learn to handle situations. Mm-hmm. So, but you you let yourself also know that look, I'm not condoning mm-hmm. or. Uh, I'm not angry. I'm not angry because they have more money or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm just accepting the fact that I'm doing the best that I can do mm-hmm. right now, and that's mm-hmm. that's really all we can do. Mm-hmm. And then willingness. You know, you have to have a willingness to experience and tolerate uncomfortable emotions. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing right now. Is that we we are so emotional that something that triggers us, mm-hmm. the, the trigger is so strong that the heart, the, the actual physiology starts. Before we're even neurologically aware. Exactly. I agree. So, I mean, my body is bowing up, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. and then my mind follows. Mm-hmm. You know, we always want to have it where it's in our mind first. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a good way of doing that is breathing techniques. Mm-hmm. You know, if, 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 if someone is, gets really angry really fast, mm-hmm. all you have to do is say, excuse me for a second. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Go in the bathroom, go in your office in a dark place, mm-hmm. and take about five deep breaths. And what that does, it disengages that fight or flight mechanism. Mm-hmm. Also, non judgment. Now, what happens usually, we blow up and we're mad, and then 10 minutes later, we're saying how stupid we are for doing that. <laughs> I can't believe I was that stupid. Mm-hmm. How could I do that? I'm not worthy. This is why people don't like me. Mm. It just sends us on this t- rabbit trail. Mm-hmm. Of emotions, mm-hmm. and 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 when you say something, you're imprinting that in your mind, and mm-hmm. it becomes a fact, mm-hmm. and which is usually not true. So, one of the big things in uh, in in allowing us to calm ourselves in the moment is called the Rain Method. Mm-hmm. It's R A I N. Okay, so 
Number one <laughs> are recognize. Mm-hmm. Recognize the internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. Don't fight it. Allow it. Mm-hmm. Investigate. Where is this coming from? Why am I so upset? Mm-hmm. Non-identify. Mm-hmm. If my friend was doing this, what advice would I have for them? Because mm-hmm. it's always easy to tell your friend what to do or how to act. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we, we're, we're great at giving advice to our friends, mm-hmm. but we beat ourselves up. Mm-hmm. So that's another good acronym. Again, I'm all mm-hmm. on short, small, because we're already running amok on our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's, let's go real precise. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to buy the house. No, somebody's mm-hmm. going to outbid me. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, somebody's saying that, you know, all Republicans are dumb and, and they're just rednecks. Here, uh, what I say is interesting to mm. myself. Mm. And then I realize that this person doesn't even really know mm-hmm. what my feelings are. Mm-hmm. You know, I would never say that mm-hmm. to anyone mm-hmm. uh, because I want to respect everybody. Even if you Absolutely. disagree, I respect them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if they keep going on, then I might throw something out there like, well, you know, you you might want to stop watching that news channel and you might want to make it, your news channels a little bit, have more variety, you know. So, uh, because, you know, if you've heard in in, uh, in in advertising, if it bleeds, it leads. Absolutely. So Absolutely. they're going to give us all the emotional things mm-hmm. that get you that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it's confirmation bias. Then mm-hmm. we're going to seek out information that supports that position that makes me so mad because I need to validate why I'm angry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can be angry all you want, mm-hmm. but what that's doing to us on the inside, mm-hmm. you have high cortisol levels, mm-hmm. uh, you're setting yourself up for diabetes, mm-hmm. for hypertension, you know, mm-hmm. heart attack. Mm-hmm. You're setting yourself up for things that when, like, COVID comes around, you're making yourself real susceptible mm-hmm. to getting that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a calm mind may be even better than a vaccine in, in this situation. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not in, because uh, I'm not a... Uh, what a non-vaxxer or whatever. I believe that there are some vaccines that have yeah. been studied uh-huh. and are worth taking. Mm-hmm. But a calm mind leads to a mm-hmm. calm life. Mm-hmm. And and that's what that's we, need, true. we need to calm it a little bit. And then mm-hmm. lastly, what you're looking at is called the wise mind. Mm-hmm. And it's trying to to find a, a balance between mm-hmm. the logical side and the emotional side. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying be a robot. You know, we need to have fun and laugh. Mm -hmm. And and the limbic system, uh, which is getting us into a lot of these issues, there's a lot of good there. Mm -hmm. But that's that impulsivity that we all have, too. Mm -hmm. It lies within that limbic system. Mm -hmm. So find that balance of reason and and logic Mm -hmm. and emotion. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have a more balanced life. Mm -hmm. So DBT would be the first thing that we would start with, and then we'd move and progress. That's why it's so important to have several different toolboxes Mm -hmm. that you can pull from Mm that's more beneficial for your client. I love it. I love it. Guys, I think we covered about five different shows here today in this 45 (laughs) minutes. It's been great. It's been great. great. And, uh, and, and, you know, I love getting to know you more, Kelly. You know, you came in here, fitness guy, and you actually are teaching a lot of our people right now in the front of our room. And so I just love sitting here talking to you and getting to know you more. And there's so many questions I have to ask after this conversation today when the camera goes off. And I'm going to get some free real estate trips. You're going to get some free real estate trips. Yes. Reciprocity. Exactly. Exactly. Guys, thank you for joining us today. Another episode of Elevate. Thank you again. Thank you, Kelly, for being here. Thank you.